Now I'm going to describe about the lumbar sympathetic. We know the lumbar sympathetic chain is at the anterolateral border of the vertebral body. It is neither lateral nor anterior, it is the anterolateral. So in that way, what is the trajectory? If we see the transverse process, the stalwarts who have made this technique, so we have seen to reach this anterolateral border, the trajectory usually matches with the transverse process. So if I take the C arm that much oblique, so that outer border of the vertebral body is touching the outer border of the transverse process, so you will reach at this level. So you have to keep it in your mind, on the right side there will be vena cava, it's like this, and on the left side there will be aorta at these two points. So when you are doing is on the left side, your target is not to hit the aorta, to keep the needle in between aorta and the vertebral body. When you are doing on the left side, your needle has to keep in such a way, you have to grease the needle in such a way after touching here, that it should be so close to the vertebra, it will not puncture the vena cava. So these two things has to be kept during the procedure. Because we can't see all the structures, we can see only the bones. So your anatomy knowledge has to be so sound so that you can see the structures which are not seen. You can see the structures which you target because we can see those structures in the fluoro which are not our target, just a guide. So first is your AP view, then squaring of the L2 vertebra if I am doing at a level of L2 because it is done at the level of L2, L3 and L4. So L2, usually I will keep the needle at the lower one third. If I am doing for L3, I will keep the needle as upper one third. If it is L4, then my needle will be at the middle of the body. Usually these needle positions are for RF. But for diagnostic purpose, you can keep the needle at the upper border of the upper one third of the L3 and if you see your die is spreading above so you can simultaneously block L2 as well as L3 by this diagnostic because L2 is the most important ganglion you have to keep it in your mind because that is the last white rami. Last white rami after that everything is grey rami so you cannot miss this white rami. We cannot dissect and see how the grey rami are communicating each other and supplying different places so we should block minimum the last white rami so for any lumbar sympathetic related procedure sympathetic overactivity where we should not miss the l2 keep it in your mind now i will show you the procedure first it will be ap then squaring of the l2 vertebra then i will take the cm that much oblique so that transverse process is touching the outer border of the vertebra and then in that trajectory my needle will go above the transverse process or below the transverse to reach the lower border of the L2 vertebra. Usually it will be easy to do going below the trans process to reach the lower border of the L2 vertebra. It will be easy to go to the upper border of the L3 vertebra going above the trans process. And some techniques are there where you can do both the techniques L2, L3 taking the single entry point to reach L2 as well as L3. That will come afterwards. But First, we should know basically how to reach the lower one third of the L2 vertebra that I will show you here. Okay, now I am going to show you the lumbar sympathetic. You can see here, so this is T11, here is T12, now this is L1, this is L2, this is L3. So if it is L2, then this is my target at this level. So it is almost true AP. I will do squaring first. Yeah. Squaring is done. Now, many times you may not see the trans process properly because it is a thin plate. That's why the picture doesn't come properly. You can reduce the KB to see that. Now, if you don't see, try to see the pedicle. This pedicle will guide you to assess about the trans process. Pedicle will guide you to assess about the facet. Pedicle will guide you to assess about the lamina for interlaminar epidural. So if pedicle is there, 
mostly here you can see this is the trans process. Now I will take that much oblique where the outer border of the trans process will touch the outer border of the vertebra. So I'm transferring the picture, AP view. Many times if you can't see the trans process properly, you can apply tricks. You do this obliquity with a continuous fluoroscopy. Then we can visualize the trans process better than doing intermittent. But we have to go through a little more exposure. I'm doing it intermittently. First, let's see. We can assume almost I am touching the trans process. Now let's see if I do it on continuous fluoroscopy, how it looks like. Again, I'm taking AP view. Now I am doing it in continuous fluoroscopy. See, trans process is seen better than before. Yeah, almost it is touching the vertebral body. Now we can see the vertebral body. So my target is lower one third. So this is my target. So this is my target. But if I'm taking this target, I'm taking the target at the skin, not here. My needle will reach there. But when I'm taking the target, target is at the skin. So I should take one centimeter lateral to this point. Why one centimeter? Because if you see, Usually, we bend the needle opposite the bevel or same side of the bevel as for your practice. I practice with the opposite the bevel. I can see here the marker that will help me to take the needle opposite the bevel. So, if you are imagining your needle is being bent half centimeter on this side and half centimeter on that side, like this way, this one centimeter is your playing zone. So, that's why if you are taking the needle one centimeter lateral when you are coming from the skin, Needle is going like this way, but you are actually reaching exact place. If you are taking the exact place here at the skin, as the needle is bent, needle will go more medially or when it will reach here, it will be either laterally or medially. So that is the concept for taking the entry point little lateral, one centimeter lateral, so that when you reach the target, you will reach at the perfect place where I need. So I will take a 15 centimeter, 10 centimeter needle will not work. So as the pointer is here, so it is showing the bevel. I will hold the needle in such a way so that pointer, many people, they have, they used to bend the needle like this, holding here. No, you fix the needle here, pointer as I am taking opposite the pointer, opposite the bevel. So I am taking the bevel downwards then I am bending with these two fingers, keeping the two fingers, index finger and middle finger in between, pushing the thumb to bend the needle. As I am keeping this constant in the same direction, so it will be just opposite the bevel. Otherwise, it may be in between somewhere. So it should not be too steep bending. It should be a smooth bending so that you can play with the needle and touch the target. So I've taken the point around one centimeter lateral to the lower one third. I can see the vertebral body. So now I will take the needle from here and try to go medially in such a way till I am hitting this outer border of the vertebral body. I will not go to the lateral view. And also I will see that my needle Till I am teaching the vertebral body, it should not cross this line. So if it is crossing this line before hitting this body, I will be in the posterior part of the vertebral body. You should see this concept. So you can see here, say this is AP view, now coming to the oblique view. In oblique view, so this is a three-dimensional picture. But when you are watching this in a two-dimensional picture, then every this surface is making a line as per the angle from where I am watching. If somebody is watching from there in EP view, 
I cannot see this part. I can see this part. That's what you call, that will make a line. If I'm watching obliquely, I am watching this part as a line, this part as a surface because it is the surface is round. You have to think like this. Surface is round. So I am watching a surface on a line, the two-dimensional view. I cannot see the surface. So I have taken that much oblique where it is touching the trans process. So I am watching this part as a line. So till I am touching the vertebral body, if I cross this line, that means I am coming here. So I am coming to the posterior part of the vertebral body. So that's why I have to try to take the needle in such a way, so close to the vertebra, and I should touch this body. Once I touch this body, I am coming into the anterior part of the body, then it will be very easy to turn the needle and go ahead to come to the target. But if I am touching here, then it will be very, very tough to reach here because needle is bent, it will be going more laterally, not medially. So that's why without changing the CM positioning till I'm hitting this bone, I will not change the CM position till I'm hitting this bone, I will not change the CM position after hitting the bone, then I will go to lateral and finish the procedure as per the requirement. Now, another important point, how to take the trajectory exact like end on view because CM is working in two angles. One angle, this is your eye, this is your image intensifier, this is having one angle and one angle is of the C. So if I take the needle at this entry point, the needle should be parallel with the C and parallel with this trajectory. So then only you will see it is almost at the end on view. So uh, when I am taking the needle, needle entry point, I will see whether it is parallel with the C and parallel with this. So if I am watching like this, we can see the needle is parallel with the C, C from here. So needle is parallel with the C. And then I will come from this side, I will see whether needle is in the same trajectory of the image intensifier. So then it will be almost end on view. So these two angles are very, very important. One is parallel with the C and another is parallel with this image intensifier angle. This is very, very important. Now we'll see how it is looking like in the CM picture. See, you can see the needle is almost end on view. Now little correction can be done from here. Now slowly, slowly, I will take the needle in such a way that it will be very close to the body but till I am touching the vertebral body I should not cross this body I, am, I can see how close I am but if I see needle is not touching the body because depth is not up to that level See, now it is showing I have crossed the vertebra, but as I am not touching the body, I will take out the needle a little bit and turn opposite side, try to go ahead. Again, I am very close to the body, but still not touching. So now I am touching the body. So we should always see when I am touching the body, what is the actual depth? Because most of the time for all the procedures, we don't see when we reach at the target, what is the length of the needle outside? That is also very, very important. Then you will slowly, you will develop that sense that when I'm reaching the target, what is the depth of my needle? So now we can see, now it is hitting the body at this oblique view. Now it is the time to take the C arm in lateral view. Before coming to the lateral view, you should always see in AP view once to see how much you are medial or closer to the vertebral body. So I will take the CM now in AP view. I will transfer the picture. So 
So I can see the needle is very very close to the lateral border of the vertebral body. So it is not laterally placed. It is quite medially. Now in the lateral view, I will see where is the needle and take the final position what should be at the facet line in AP view. So now I am at the lateral border of the vertebra. I will go to the anterolateral body and when I am reaching the anterolateral part, my needle should be at the facet line. So we can see where my needle is there. It is almost across the middle of the vertebra. Now another important point trying to show you that in the lateral view, this cephalocaudal or obliquity should not be changed. What we have done to square the vertebra in the lateral view, it will not be straight. It will be that much cephalocaudal. So we have to maintain that cephalocaudal view for that vertebra because I am targeting that vertebra. So in lateral view, you cannot change this. So you have to maintain that obliquity where we have finalized the squaring. So that should be maintained in the lateral view also. Here, now in lateral view, I will reach at the anterior border of the vertebral body. So now I have reached the anterior border of the vertebral body and I will see whether it is coming at the facet line. So now I have come to the AP view. We can see the needle is at the facet line. So that means you are at the anterior lateral part of the vertebra. So if you see the vertebral body, basically if you see why it is coming at the facet line, because my target is the anterolateral part. So if it is anterolateral part, then it is coming at the facet line. Because in X-ray, I cannot see the depth, whether it is posterior to the facet or here, whether it is here or here, it will look same. So your needle is coming like this way, reaching this level, neither here nor here, it is coming here, this level. So that will be your facet line. So that's why that is the final point. Another important thing, here the psoas major muscle is coming. So you have to keep the needle in such a way so that needle should be anterior to the psoas line. So needle should be anterior to the psoas. If this is the psoas, my index finger is the psoas. Needle has to be anterior to the psoas. Otherwise, when you see in AP view, when you inject the dye, dye will come laterally. So at this position, you should see the die spread first in AP view then come to the lateral view. In AP view you see if the die is going up and down then only you should accept don't inject too much die 1 ml 1.5 ml just see die is coming laterally or medially or going up and up down. So if it is coming laterally take the needle little ahead then you check again if your die is going up and down you are at the perfect position. Now let us see the AP view and lateral view together. So I will transfer the AP view on that side. See, we can we can see here is a lateral view coming at the border of the vertebral body, and AP view coming at the facet line. So this should be the final position for lumbar sympathetic.